Hi, I'm Mike Glenn, Senior Pastor of Brentwood Baptist Church in Brentwood, Tennessee, which is a suburb of Nashville. The question before us is how our church has decided to respond to the issue of homosexuality. Uh, several years ago, some leaders of my church said, how is our church going to respond if, if gays try to come into our church? And my question was to them, well, what are we going to do with the people who already attend? Just the sheer demographics, the, the percentages that we deal with, uh, you're going to have gay and lesbian people, or people who would identify themselves as living that lifestyle in your church. Uh, this um, was um, ramped up a little bit when we started a young adult worship experience called Kairos on Tuesday night, and we noticed uh, a substantial number of gays were attending that, including some of the leading uh, uh, proponents of the gay lifestyle in the greater Nashville community. So uh, they wanted to know what Mike thought about it and how, um, how what I was going to be teaching about it. So one Tuesday night we taught, and here's what we taught. Out of Romans 1, uh, Paul confronts uh, the, the fall down of, uh, uh, the breakdown of the fall. And the way that we're, we're, it's shown that we're having a struggle spiritually is that it shows itself in our sexuality. Once the spiritual part of us is messed up, then the, the, first, part we see, the first place we see that is in our sexuality. For some reason, the pipes of spirituality and sexuality run very close within our souls. And if there's a leak or short in one, then it, it, it crashes the other one. And so what Paul says is that when we begin to see the breakdown of the relationship with God, the first place we saw that is anything outside of a committed marriage, anything outside of a, of a man committed to Christ in, in a marriage with a woman who's committed to Christ, anything outside of that is a sign of the breakdown of the relationship with God. This includes adultery, uh, this includes uh, pornography, this includes, uh, yes, homosexuality. Now, we always want to stop here and bang on the issue of homosexuality. But the issue that Paul puts it with is a symptom of the breakdown of the relationship with God. It's a sin, yes, but it's only a sin. It's not any worse or any bigger than any other sins that Paul lists in that, in that section of Romans 1. So then how do we establish a relationship? This is where the teaching of hospitality has become uh, important to us. Uh, the world teaches tolerance. And when you think about it, tolerance is a hateful way to respond to somebody. Uh, tolerance means that I'm going to let you breathe. Uh, you can uh, have a heart attack. Uh, you can starve to death in front of me. But I'm under no obligation to help you because I'm just tolerating you. Uh, no one wants to come to church and hear the pastor say, welcome to church because we tolerate you here. Uh, the teaching of hospitality, which is an old teaching, goes all the way back to Leviticus, is that the people of God are responsible for the strangers in their midst. They're responsible for the others in our midst. And we protect them from the greater society. We protect them from the culture who would attack them. So uh, we try best we can to establish relationships. Uh, we take a strong stand against bullying. Uh, we don't let anybody put anybody down because of this or that. Uh, but we try to establish a relationship, we, we, we hang out, we enjoy conversation, and it's in the, the, the strength of that friendship where the conversation can happen about what we believe about God or what we believe about how our sexuality is best expressed. Uh, but that only happens in the context of a committed friendship where, where they know that you're going to be their friend no matter what, and that happens best in, uh, in, in the biblical expression of hospitality where the love of Christ is lived out in a very real and concrete way. So I hope this helps. My name is Mike Glenn, and this is Brentwood Baptist Church.